In this installment, we're going to be going over Thursday night football showdown slate on DraftKings between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. Let's get into it. Guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for our Thursday night football showdown slate on DraftKings between the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers. We got a lot of injuries in this game, so you know when we get to that injury report, it's going to be super, super important. But, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. Don't forget about that TikTok at Chef underscore D91. And don't forget about that Patreon, which I'm going to talk about that very, very soon. But we are at the homepage right now. We have made it to 1.49 thousand subscribers. It's like each and every video you guys are showing out. I appreciate the love and support. Um, each video, I'm asking you guys to push the number higher and it continues to go up. We were at 1.45 probably like a week and a half ago, but we are continuing to move up. Our goal is to 2,000 subscribers. That's going to be our goal. Let's continue to push that number forward. And I'm going to continue to give you these showdown slates. Uh, I'm enjoying the comments down below of people uh, support. And uh, just giving thanks that I'm breaking down these games. So uh, let's continue to get into that, all right? In that last Monday Night Football showdown slate, you guys showed up. 749 views. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're getting more consistency there in the viewing um, from Monday, Thursday Night Football and the, the Monday Night Football previous to that. Good, solid numbers all around, all right? Now, on to that Patreon. If you guys missed out on... Uh, Monday night football. We almost had a clean sweep. It was one issue. One issue was the Jacksonville Jaguars. I had the Jacksonville Jaguars to win, but there was no value in that. So I gave out anytime touchdown Travis Etienne. As you can see, that came out. I gave out anytime touchdown Evan Ingram. That came out. And I also gave NBA. And this was a uh, underdog here, big underdog. People were scared. The Pacers to win money line right there. That came through as well. So we had three out of four on the Monday night uh, Monday night slate. So guys, if you want winning bets, go to that link provided down below and get into this Patreon. We got NFL futures coming up. We well NFL futures are already in there. We have NBA futures coming up. We have obviously the playoffs that we're going to be getting ready for. So get to that link down below. Now on to the injury report here for this game between the Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers. What we're looking here at the pay, um, at the injury report, we're looking at the Monday and Tuesday DNPs. Those are going to be the guys that are trending towards being out. You do not want to see a DNP um, where, you're, where you're coming up on a short week and the game is on a Thursday. So Demario Douglas. He's in concussion protocol right now. He has two DMPs. We'll see what happens. Most likely, he's not going to play. Ramon J. Stevenson is already out of the game, so we already know that the lead guy will be Ezekiel Elliott. That's why he is on the thumbnail. So we got a double thumbs up with Ezekiel Elliott. Everyone else, uh, we have um, some non-participants or just not. We didn't get the full injury report here. They did not disclose everything for some of these players like Sean Wade or Dietrich Wise or um, Ezekiel is going to be fine. He's going to be playing. But the only two key guys, Ramon J. Stevenson and Demario Day Douglas, are going to be out for that Patriots side of the football. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, we already know and they've confirmed Kenny Pickett is going to be out. The starting uh, quarterback for the Steelers will be Mitchell Trubisky, okay? So we already seen that's going to be – we already know where we're going to go in that direction. Patrick Peterson was doing veteran resting. He should be fine to play. James Pierre um, is trending towards being out. And we have a big uh, pop-up issue here with Najee Harris. This could open up um, some usage here for Jalen Warren. All right. Um, I don't know what happened on Monday, but Tuesday, he has a knee issue. All right. They probably sat on Monday. Tuesday, did not practice at all. Popped up with a knee issue. And that does not look good at all. At this point, they're probably probably going to sit him out for this Thursday game. So we can lean towards 
Jalen Warren a little bit harder in this game because we had uh, uh, he sat on the Monday and then didn't show up on Tuesday. It's going to have to be a miracle on Wednesday for him to feel fine and be ready for that Thursday night football game. So that's going to be a positive sign so far for Jalen Warren. OK, now let's get into the captains. We're going to kick things off at that captain position. This one is going to be interesting. If we're looking at the the over under here, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers as a 6 point favorite on ESPN with an over under of 29.5. So there's not going to be a lot of points going by Vegas here and it's understandable. We have Bailey Zappi can't move the ball. They didn't even score last week and then you have Mitchell Trubisky as the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So there's uh it's a whole lot of ugliness in here and the captain spot can be super super unique in this uh, lineup build pretty much almost everyone is viable they just to be legit all right so let me pick out the the main guys let me pick out the main guys we're going to start off at the top here ezekiel elliott is going to be one of the top uh captain plays not saying he's the favorite but he's going to be a focus in our lineup builds because he's going to get all the work he's going to get all the rushing and receiving work with no ramon j stevenson he's going to get the lion's share here all right he's finally going to get the the full workload like he used to with the dallas cowboys bill belichick is going to instill in his veteran and trust him uh willingly all right obviously because ramon j stevenson is out He's going to be the next guy up, all right? So love Ezekiel Elliott here. I love him for a touchdown. If we're looking at fantasy points allowed to opposing running backs, and I adjusted the, um, how, how do you call these? The mark, the ratings. I switched it from the last past three weeks, all right? We're getting the back end of the season here. Defenses change, injuries, everything. I want to see what has been working lately. And that worked for us in that Monday night football slate. I showed you guys how the Jacksonville Jaguars have been struggling against quarterbacks and wide receivers. And look what happened. Jake Browning had over 300 yards and Jamar Chase had a phenomenal game. 11 catches, over 100 yards and a touchdown. So it's, it's good to adjust and get a different scope on things of how things look with all these teams, okay? Now, if we're looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers at that running against opposing running backs, um, they are currently... Now, they are 10th overall, but the key factor here, the reason why I like Zeke to get in that end zone, they are 27th in the red zone, all right? Giving up touchdowns, all right? Maybe they're not giving up a bunch of yards, but they're definitely giving up touchdowns to opposing running backs, giving up 79 yards a game, 0.8 TDs a game as well, as well as 21 receptions on three catches. So we got the lion share here, all going to Ezekiel Elliott. Love him in this situation here. All right, the next guy we're going to be talking about, I'm going to bring up Jalen Warren. All right, we're going to wait on news of Najee Harris, as you can see. He has a big Q tag. He did not practice at all on Monday. And then on Tuesday, um, he has a knee issue. Harris did not take part in Tuesday's walkthroughs because of a knee injury. That is major. OK, this is just a walkthrough. He didn't even show up for that. So if he is out, then uh, Jalen Warren gets thrusted to that captain spot. Maybe he was going to be that anyway, because we know how explosive he is. He's coming off two bad games. But we know the upside here of Jalen Warren, all right? Um, 9 for 129 in a touchdown against Cleveland. 15 for 101 in a touchdown against Green Bay. Both of those are top 10, top 12 defenses there that have been playing very good all year long. Jalen Warren, it doesn't matter. He just needs a crease, and he can take that all the way to the house. So there's going to be the top two plays there. Now, some of these other secondary players here. We have Pickens. We have Deontay Johnson. You can consider both one of those two. Whatever you feel like is, is your favorite. What you would need here is one of these guys to either be the main target getter, who, if you're looking at the main target getter, is Deontay Johnson. He leads this team in targets, as you can see, uh, 9, 4, 8, 8, and 5. You see consistency there. You saw he got a touchdown last week against Arizona. You want consistency in targets? That's Deontay Johnson. If you want explosiveness, say you need one big play, 60 yard touchdown george pickens is your guy so it, it depends obviously i'm just giving you a breakdown of what these two bring to uh towards the table all right more targets for deontay more explosiveness from george pickens all right that's what you're going to need 
from when you got Mitchell Trubisky throwing the football, right? And gun it. Sometimes, hey, he might not be able to go down the field methodically. You need one big play. George Pickens is your guy to do that. So he can be considered as a captain, right? Now, some of these other plays here at the captain that I will consider. I'm skipping. Pat Fryer move, solid option. I wish Kenny Pickett was back. He, Kenny Pickett and Pat Fryer move have a very nice connection. I'm moving Pat, Pat Fryer move down to a flex spot. The other two, um, is it two or one? I'm going to say one. The other one captain will be the Steelers defense, okay? We're talking about Bailey Zappi here struggling. We are, we've already seen so many games of Bill Belichick fumbling between Bailey Zappi and between Mac Jones. They could switch. They could be... Uh, horrible first half for Bailey Zappi. They bring in Mac Jones and the same thing occurs. This is the Pittsburgh Steelers defense that plays strong at home, all right? They were embarrassed uh, in that Arizona game. They're going to play better at home. As you can see, this whole entire season, they're averaging 10.7 points at home and six point fantasy uh, points on the road. You see the difference there. there there's less in the, the passing department. There's more inter there's uh, interceptions, there's deflections, and look at the sack number. 23 sacks at home, 11 on the road. So this pass rush of the Steelers is there. TJ Watt, Highsmith, they're going to be going after Bailey Zappi, creating uh, havoc there, and I love the Steelers as, a, as a, another option there at captain. I'm not even going to say sleeper because the over-under is kind of giving it away, so that's why you can go that route um, as well. Even on the board of captain, you could even consider uh, both kickers. Just being honest, how ugly this game can be. We saw only six points scored in that Chargers and Patriots game last week. So Boswell and Rylan are going to be on the board as uh, plays, major plays that you, we need to look at. Rylan, matter of fact, Rylan has been very inconsistent. He has a poor percentage as well. If I'm trusting one guy, we're going with Boswell at kicker, okay? Just being honest. Ryland kind of sucks. Hopefully next year he gets things a little bit better. But right now, he has a very poor percentage. Hey, I, I wish they would have kept Nick Falk. But these are going to be the captain plays for this slate on Thursday. Let's get into the flex. Now on to the flex plays. One of our main flex guys we're going to be going with here will be Hunter Henry. All right. We're going to scroll down to Hunter Henry here. Um, I like him in this matchup just because of, of what I've seen the last couple weeks here in the defense of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've been very poor against opposing tight ends. There's the number one tight end here. Uh, you saw it wasn't a boost in production with Bailey Zappi at quarterback, but he did see four targets, better than what he saw against the Giants, uh, uh, had 15 yards. But this matchup here, we're looking at fantasy points allowed to opposing tight ends, all right? Right now, the last past three weeks, this team in the Pittsburgh Steelers have been struggling. 29th overall, 29th in the red zone, giving up seven catches, 71 yards, and almost half a touchdown per game to that tight end position. Now, with the Patriots, they do have two tight ends. They have Hunter Henry and they have Mike Gusecki. So both of these guys are going to be on the list. Obviously, I favor uh, Hunter Henry more in this in this scenario here, okay? But we're going to have both of these guys on the list because they are being utilized in this offense. Again, a, a, definitely a high snap share for this offense. Now, for the quarterbacks. These are rough options here. That's why they're definitely, definitely flex plays. I don't, I don't really like them uh, as well. If I've had to choose one or the other, it'll be Mitchell Trubisky. Bailey Zappi has not shown us anything, um, and he's just been poor all year. So I'm not even going to click him. If you want to, you can. But I'm leaning more Trubisky um, over over Bailey Zappi easily. He has better options, better weapons. And he, he's the home team, okay? This New England Patriots team is one of the bottom feeders in the league. That's why. That's the only reason why we can consider uh, Mitchell Trubisky, all right? Um, you can play Patriots defense if you guys are playing uh, devil's ad advocate here. And you're thinking, hey, you know, both of these quarterbacks suck. New England's defense is good. Bill Belichick is a mastermind. That can happen as well. 
Uh, so th you, if you want to go that route, this is a, a poor quarterback here in Mitchell Trubisky. I can see mistakes on both sides of the football. That's why I'm more heavier on kickers and defenses in our lineup builds for this matchup here that we have. Um, if we're choosing a pass catcher for the New England Patriots, since we have issues with Demario Douglas, the number one wide receiver right now for the Patriots will be uh, Devontae Parker. Okay, this is the lead guy here, especially if you got a big Q tag. On Demario uh, Douglas, Devontae Parker came through last week with nine targets and 64 yards. He was the most consistent wide receiver that they had. All right, so if you want to go that route, you can consider Devontae Parker. I already mentioned both kickers. Juju has been uh, porous uh, all year. It hasn't hasn't really done anything. He really hasn't. Uh, but they might be down to him as the number two option if it's Parker and just Juju Smith-Schuster. Maybe he gets a handful of catches, has some opportunities. Uh, the guy that has more explosiveness that can take any catch and take it all the way to the house is Tyquan Thornton. They use him more of as a gadget guy. That's why you see him taking rushes and screens as well. He would need to pop one of those, um, those short pass plays or run plays and take it all the way to the house. He's a dart throw there when you're looking this low here. Uh, other than that, it gets really, really ugly really fast i don't think we need to dig deep down this far uh because i think all the juiciness is in the middle kickers defenses running backs okay that's where it's going to be at in this very low scoring environment guys that can pop off like i said hunter henry george pickens deontay johnson those type of guys if you want to choose someone that's middling that's going to get a, a solid amount of targets pat fryer move all right so i don't think you need to go below uh, Devontae Parker um, in your lineup build. You got Tyquan Thorne, I did mention, because he has some upside. I don't think we need to go to a backup running back with the Patriots as well, uh, who's Ty Montgomery. This is not like we have Tom Brady here who's going to dump off the the, bat, the football at a high rate here. Um, so let's go with the, the locks in this slate, all right? The locks in this slate, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be both running backs. Give me Ezekiel Elliott. We're going to wait on news, obviously, for Najee Harris, but give me Jalen Warren, especially if Najee Harris is out. And if we're choosing a third option, I want the Steelers defense going up against this Patriots offense here. These are going to be the locks to have in each and every uh, lineup build, and this provides a whole lot of salary. You have no problem with fitting in Pickens and other guys like that because you save so much salary going with a defense and some lower options at running back, okay? Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll be back with another video very soon, all right? Peace out, guys.